look in the vise. <laughs> Some of the fly fish food. Cheech Gorn. Now you can fish it just like that. Just sort of a, a theme when he was almost finished with the fly. And th there were a couple of like just putting the hook in the vise. You can fish it just like that. So flash, this might be on the the outside edge of a lot. I don't want to say flash is like bucktail because it's not. But properties of, of materials as you're tying them, you, you, you do start to get to a place where if there is too much of something, it suffocates itself. So Flash doesn't have all the crinkly properties of good bucktail, but um, you do need to let, I mean it's opaque, right? Most of it is, and you have to let Flash cannot be flashy if it's not seen. So at, at a point, you start to get to diminishing returns. And, and it's not that more flash becomes incrementally less effective. It, it's that it actually becomes, um, it reduces the effectiveness of the flash you've already put on. So just something to, to think about. And really... The only reason you're going to get there is by putting a lot of flash on, which I really encourage you to explore. And the, the concept of too much flash, we can cut it off? Absolutely. We got one. We got two. We got this changer that I have... I probably spent 20 minutes on that this morning, just just chopping. So starting with with more, especially with the synthetics, because taper is not involved. You, you can't cut the length of bucktail off and have it swim the same. So this is the UB Chenille Olive Copper. Tell you what, they got me. They got me with that. I like the regular copper. I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I've decided that is my favorite, but you know what? I'm also going to do this wild. You can ask my friend Jack about whether or not brown trout like yellow. Shit annoys me. You, you do, you, I'm trying to restate you do. You don't need to do anything, in fact. Um, I would encourage people to explore contrast. I have made a number of references to conventional baits and thinking of when I was more of a consumer of fly tying and fishing videos. I, I wasn't fishing. I didn't have a spin rod with me. Talking about hard baits, I didn't know about any of that stuff. I mean, I did kind of, but just from when I was a kid, you know, fish, fishing all this stuff without as much thought. And, and so really, here's a little side, side mini tangent. 
if if you used to fish gear and you don't anymore for one reason or another, and you are into now tying and, and, and fishing with a fly rod, go back to gear. Give it a try. When I've just found that the approach that you take, I mean, if you if you treat gear and, and gear folks treating no 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 one watching this is just pure gear, um, but who knows? If you treat gear or flies the same way that you would treat you know your preferred style of fishing. It, it becomes just as fun in some ways. I still prefer the fly rod for almost all fishing applications, but you know, looking what type of action you want out of a lure, or the, the different types of presentations, and it, it's just as nuanced and and technical and action a rod and what you get the one pieces two pieces different lengths my fishing seven seven six eight um medium heavy what's the recovery speed i mean the the world of gear is really very cool and just like fly fishing it can be pretty simple you know, the deeper you go and more intense you get, those complications tend to increase, but it's it's all within your control. And also, watching a trout come screaming off of a bank and smash into a jerkbait doesn't suck. And, noteworthy, this is now, we, we are far beyond a theory, or, hmm, I keep seeing this, I don't know what the scientific process is of calling something a fact, but we're as close as I think I'll ever get. Brown trout eat the stomach of their prey. And fishing jerk baits, even the small ones, the ones that have two, the two treble platform. I, I was using old leader because I, you know, I would get musky leader down to meh. And then their faces can be longer than that, so a little mouth to organ. If they choke it down here and it's up hanging out of their mouth at the mono, the the wire leader does very little. So I was using that. Now I'm just like, well, shit, I really like the time with this stuff. You know what else I like tying with? This Semper Fly 100 strand. I was just listening to a, a Killer Mike interview or podcast with uh, or Joe Rogan interview. A Joe Rogan podcast with Killer Mike. Killer Mike's one. Sh shouts out. Shh. Which I think grammatically is correct. I, I, I thought of that for a reason. And it's escaping me now. It'll come back. Musky leaders. I'm not getting there. Forget it. I will say shouts out to Tommy Lynch. If I were at all concerned about the, the fanboy nature of how much I gassed this dude up, I would have stopped talking about him or referring to him 
a long time ago. I will say that if I fished with him any earlier in my life when I was gainfully, at least financially, gainfully employed prior to giving that up and becoming a guide, starting my own business and being very, very not gainfully employed financially, um, I would have been fishing with that dude as much as I could, and I still will. I, I got to go out with him, and we moused, and the guy's just, he's a good dude, super fishy. I talked with a, a guy that had You have guys that you like. I think guys that work well with certain people. Um, I've I've taken so much of my guiding from the saltwater dudes that I fished with, John Irwin and Charleston, Dave White, and out of, out of, outside of Tampa, out of Anna Maria. Um, you can find John Irwin just looking up. John Irwin, Fly Right, Charters, uh, Charleston, Captain Dave White is Anna Maria Island Charters, AMI Charters. But just the, the style of of them, and it's not salt water, it's, those two are also different. Um, but just finding what works with people and, and direct communication and I don't know, a little bit of it, I think, is their approach to to the water. Me to the river, them to the open ocean, the inshore, whatever. They do a bunch of stuff. But, you know, having a plan for the day, but, but not necessarily being stuck on it. Um, I, I, I had a triple tail eat. We were effectively cruising uh, more or less kind of burning time in between one spot or another. Ty was moving. We, we were going to go uh, pick up my, my ex-wife, wife then. Yeah, it'd be much weirder if we were going to go pick up my ex-wife. But we were going to get her for the second half of this day. And so we had, you know, like 45 minutes, and he knew of a spot or two. And this is just, this is the good guide move, right? And instead of going somewhere and just, like, being early for the second pickup, he is, he wanted to go check on a couple things. And I could cast pretty well, and he wanted to get me ate up, and and he did. I had a big triple tail eat, and um, he just didn't bring it home. Decent set. On like I don't know the fifteenth presentation, after one or two, he was kind of like. Yeesh. You know, the first cast, it was like, you got to make this thing count. It's right there. It's laid up. You got to get it in close. And man, it was a good cast. Good presentation. Nada. Nothing from the fish. That was the late. It was so big. That was the laziest. He was he was laughing. Just getting it would come right near his mouth. He's like, uh, uh. <laughs> We're both laughing like, what? What does this thing need? Like he was interested. He's just like, I just I don't want to move at all. I, I respect that. Now, 
that, that is a size 4. Check that. Size 2 TP610. Um, size 2 Arex TP650. I do go down to the small glass rattles. I like those plastics one, plastic ones way more. Um, they just are a little too big for the small hawks. Now I am tying this one because I want to go out and catch some trout. And this is the only fly that is going to do the job. That isn't true. I, I just, I kind of have a gap. Kind of have a gap in the box. I like the, I like the olive and, and the darker tones of flash with the bright underside. Now with the glass, I do like to liberal coating and then I also want to get this under and I'm doing this to avoid focused pressure points on any part of the glass so instead of the entire thing being held on held down onto a hook shank that is probably a little off centered or at least focused very specifically on these on one part of the glass on one part of the glass which means when you get you know when you're casting up into the sauce when you when you clip a rock or whatever you're going to break it so sometimes I'll put a little piece of foam down and it's just so it sits a little more evenly so that that All the force of holding it down is spread over probably two, three, four times as much surface area as opposed to just trying, tying it straight down to the hook shank. So le less about adhering and more about protecting you do tight wraps with this stuff and the UV is not going anywhere the glass is going to end up breaking that's just cost of doing business so thankfully I enjoy tying and once the glass is broken and things start to get a little wonky zip zip hit it with the razor retie the front that UV can, it's not bone dry, it's, it's pretty darn close though. It can leave a little tack and kind of be sticky, which I don't like, but can help to hold that UV on just a little bit. Man, I had a couple scrap scrap heaps of flash and they're really showing up to work right now I don't want this trailing down the hook if you have issues rushing your head that's the reason why I'm just yapping this whole time. It's because the the entirety of this fly is relatively simple. As the, the podcast that I've listened to a, a couple thousand times said, until you get to that fucking head. Now I like it. That's just because I'm sick, but... I really do enjoy tying these. And with tying on mallard flanks, there's really not... 
in any sort of magical way to do it effectively. Just smash it on there. I, I do, as I'm riffing, kind of use that thumbnail. If you tie flies, do not cut your thumbnail super short. So once it's flat, you can really get down in there. That's about right. Yeah, I really don't. I'd, I'd rather tell stories about Captain Dave. American Spirit Pro Staff. This is a maneuver that I've, I'm not going to say shared because this is Tommy Lynch's, this is me being monkey see, monkey do, watching him rap over. And I'd heard him say it on one of these podcasts or interviews, but... You know, talking about the Palmer and Rabbit and getting a little wall. <clears throat> and, and, you know, saying, effectively, you're, you know, rapping over itself. And I was like, what is he talking about? Because I'm rapping it forward, and it's always such a disaster. But here's the thing with Rabbit. And this is another, I think, misconception. Of, of what it's what it is what it's used for what it's good at what it's not good at because people talk about man you, you hear some of the stuff on the streamer chronicles it's just like guys I don't know take it down there's there's so much information there that is still referenced in it which is unfortunate because I think that a lot of the stuff and some of the guys on there are just if it weren't the White River, and if it weren't at a time where there weren't more voices on social media, um, it, it would not be considered truth by so many people. So the fact that, I, I forget who it was, someone talking about um, Rabbit being just the worst, because it absorbs water. It's like, okay... I see what you're saying. You don't have any idea what you're talking about, but I guess it's valuable to see that. So Rabbit, yeah, it moves. There's some cool properties in the movement. What I love about Rabbit is, is that it is opaque. It's, it's dense. It blocks light. It's, it's a full body, and it compresses. It also, it carries water weight. So does the hide. So getting a good amount of rabbit and palmering around like this is not just for the bulk building. In fact, I would say very little of it is for the bulk building because it compresses a good deal. Your the swim of your fly changes very dramatically if you're just doing one wrap of that yellow instead of three and then you're skipping the second palmer. Cause this has momentum with it. So it wants to it wants to keep going when you have that deer hair wanting to give you the float recovery and come back up. So using and really thinking about how you're engineering your fly as opposed to just how it looks and this is cool. and But, but really thinking about those properties as you're 
constructing and designing a fly is that's the fun stuff for me can, you know can you catch fish with just a fish mask and two or three clumps of materials tied behind with some flash yeah sure but i think that you can make fish go with some of this buoyancy and float recovery stuff deer hair Yeah, but a good one. And I, I get asked about the the hair. I, I feel like a one of these stupid fucking influencer accounts. Everyone always asks, how do I keep my hands so moist? But for real, people ask me about tying and what type of deer hair and all that stuff. And someone had just commented on a video about the, you know, with a, with a Dahlberg diver. And the, the tricky part to answering that without sounding like a dick is that I really, I, I am not in the store with you. And even if I were, I'd, I'd probably start to, you'd see some of my circuits shorting out as I was attempting to explain w what it is that I look for. And when I say look for, what I really mean is the things that I am feeling. So there, there are pieces of hair and hair qualities that you can visibly they look great you really don't know until you're you're into them so this is body hair and you can see with the the segmentation and and coloring from base to tip but it's it's airy body hair airy meaning, or I should say reading, buoyant. I also like a pretty wide collar on that. Once again, something that I had heard Tommy say and just really, uh, there's so many things to focus on and just e even getting the, the number of spins, the number of the reps of tying with deer hair under your belt to make this even remotely palatable to tie and to tie and screw up and to tie again so what type of deer hair I would say start with belly if you can get body hair and you can get it real tight you get you get good swim you get the float recovery from the buoyancy but packing deer hair and fishing it subsurface the nature of doing that is your it's like using balsa wood on on lures you are incorporating or you're taking advantage of, you're utilizing the, the buoyant property of deer hair or balsa wood to give you a stronger reaction to a shape. So I'll, I'll use an example. Best color ever.
Good heavens. This is a color that I remember dyeing a bunch of stuff, this, this color. My cat's lucky it didn't end up marigold. And I was holding on to that thought I had previously, but that's gone. Oh yeah, the example. So take any shape, let's just say a ball. Check that, we're gonna say a cube. Let's take a cube. Oh, I don't know. Do you need a size? The size of a car. No, that's not going to work. Let's do the size of a very large ice cube. And you put that cube into the water. What is that cube doing? Well, Ellis, what is it made of? Exactly. Let's say it's made of steel. It's going to sink. What does it feel like when you pull it? Uh, well, it's going to be easier to pull than when it's out of the water. Is that true? Yeah. Up to a certain point, you know, when you start trying to pull that thing at 80 miles an hour and you're attached right to the face of the cube, it's going to be pretty difficult. Let's make that cube hollow. Very strong, very strong material, so it's not it's not going to break. And it's buoyant. Screw it. Let's make the cube foam. What is that cube doing? It's floating. Okay, well, we need to get it underwater. How are you going to do it? You have to hold it underwater, okay? What does it feel like when you pull it through the water? Not fucking comfortable, I'll tell you that much. Is it harder to pull through the water than it is to move in the air? Yes. There's a buoyant force acting on that cube. So those two, two examples, you know, those are they're polar opposites, but that gives you the, the spectrum of what you're working with when you're shaping something that is buoyant. The more buoyant you get something, the less you need of it in order to get the desired outcome. So if you made a, a head of steel with the exact same properties outside of density, it's, it's not going to... I, I talk about push with buoyancy and push with friction. The push with buoyancy is, is what gives this fly its magic. Having something that is is based on friction, so I, I like on the dungeons, I like that push, quote unquote, I like that displacement of water to be based on friction, which is the water traveling through the hair, I was going to say follicles, which is the water traveling through, in, in between, and around all of the hair on top of the dungeon. That's why I don't pack them. I, I'm not. I don't want to use buoyancy. Strong fuzzy. Not buoyant at all. You can get a good amount of force out of it because of its rigidity and its, I believe this is a scientific term, degree of crinkle. Got this one yellow hair that I'm just I'd like I'd like to not have there, but hmm. we're gonna 
Let's see. So when I'm tying those in and, and getting real sneaky with these ties, definitely where I like to go to 100. I've, I've been using 100, but um, like it. when you're using 200 and you really you want to get down on, on these cuts, you want to go down pretty close to the to the shank, so 200 can build a little bit of bulk. So on these close ties. You can get two or three wraps around, walk it up to the front, whip it off, and then if you're just starting to tie with deer hair, if you haven't explored this, the mashing, start mashing. This, this stuff is not fragile. If you're, if you're cutting through hair really quickly, Go get some new hair, especially if you're using 200. Get some new hair. Because there are some pieces of deer hair that they're cooked, they're brittle. Some of it's processing. Some of it's, you know, there, there's some natural proclivity to being weaker or, or at least not being able to withstand the force of GSP. So I like, also like to do a little super glue after those five or six whips to then cinch all that in. Mash, mash, mash. So if, if you have interest in this whole buoyancy, the air conditioner is on. We'll see how that sounds. If you have interest in the whole buoyancy and you know float recovery and all that, and you're not either sold or you're less interested in listening to a voice while staring at deer hair getting lashed to a piece of metal, there are some very cool videos and channels of people making lures and I, mean, I, I know that one is certainly cross I don't know Marlene Marlin Bates and it, I haven't watched one in a while but the you know something I, I always thought was cool is he's when he's selecting different wood, you know, it's not, he's not doing it because of how it smells. There's different properties to it. And, I mean, look, look at some of these lure designers. Rapala, there's a little crankbait. It's the shad wrap called the shallow runner. I always call it the square bill because it's got a square bill. And it, that little thing, ruins fish. Um, in the size, I don't know. If, if you're interested, let me know. But it's just balsa. It's just a piece of wood carved in a certain way. And, and because it is buoyant and you have water flowing over it, I'm about to lose my captive audience. Alright, one note on color here. I've talked about it not mattering. I do think that th this is probably more of a personal preference versus a an observation of, of fish behavior, but Man, olive, like a light olive, in clear water with a, say, rocky or cobbly substrate, it disappears. And, and then having all this flash in there, 
you really you get a lot of the I'm here now I'm gone and it's just it's something that I have gone to when when the bite seems to be a little tougher So yeah, just 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 a note on the rabbit and deer hair thing. It, it can be it can be a lot to to learn and take in. I really encourage people to do it, especially if, if you are getting into to fly tying. Um, there there isn't a oh. Holy shit, I'm really good at tying with deer hair. That doesn't happen. You you have to tie with deer hair and be bad at it for a little while. And recognize that that is going to be the case. And, and fish and tie with the intention of um, getting better. I'm just gonna go a little bit of flat, a little bit of flat, starting to feel a little Bob Ross. Yeah, we like that. Oh my god, he says that. Oh yeah, we fucking like that. If I start getting a little more narrow than I'd like, which I am, I, I, I come in here and just take that, take that mustache off. Someone's mowing the lawn. They, they clearly do not recognize that I'm trying to generate content in here. Selfish. Selfish of them to not recognize my needs. Super glue. My God. We're just going to go for it. You don't need much. In fact, some might argue that a little dab will do you. Now, if you have gel, I just. Man, I destroy stuff. So if it's like, what, what is the product that I like? Okay. Good. Now, what is the product that I like that I tend to destroy less quickly? All right, cool. That's what I'm going to use. I kind of caught some of these hairs. We are entering into doesn't matter territory.
So yeah, holding water weight, in fact, it's just, it's, it's all, all materials. They all have characteristics that you use in one way or another as you're designing a fly. And once that design process becomes more thoughtful, you can start to incorporate characteristics that, that others or, or even you last week thought were trying to blow that eye off my hand. You may have thought they were undesirable or, or quote unquote bad, but if you look at them with a different perspective, is this a lesson on life? If you look at them with a different perspective and, and you try to use them for their strengths, why would water weight, why would retaining water be a good thing? Well, it's weight balancing. You, your momentum increases in the air so that you are able to cast with more ease. Relative to the surface area of the fly, you have more momentum than you did before. In the water, it, it's a material that likes to be in the water. It absorbs water, it moves somewhat freely through the water. So it, it promotes a, a continuation of, I don't know, it, it's kind of inertia, right? It, it wants to continue moving the way it is moving, whereas the deer hair wants to stop doing what it's doing. So you really don't have a lot of stuff going on in this fly that wants to keep it doing what it's doing. Flash hook, feathers, you need something. You need some body in there that wants to continue doing what it's doing. And, you know, craft fur is a very similar, has a lot of similar properties. For the record, Interchanging craft fur and rabbit, um, I don't think is unique whatsoever. And, and, or but, and, I don't think is unique whatsoever, and can be effective. You do need to be careful though, it's, it's, it becomes easy to overdo it with craft fur. Foam, and some tin foil on the inside, super glued to my UV torch, which by the way, this thing, rechargeable battery, torch. That's all she wrote, man, little soapbox there on, on a bunch of different topics. But you know, I gotta get it out sometime. Tie with deer hair. Have fun at the vice. Have fun on the water. And don't be afraid. Cut that thing off if it sucks. <laughs>